Bateman, the uh, author of Small is Beautiful, Economics is a People Matter, is E.F. Schumacher. E.F. Schumacher said, the real problems facing the planet are not economic or technical, they're philosophical. The philosophy of unbridled materialism is now being challenged by events. And if we care about this stuff, we are actually a species of nature. We care about this stuff. We have to turn our philosophy that's producing this unbridled materialism on its head. We keep talking about we need lower taxes and more growth. I think we have to go forward with a philosophy of higher taxes and no growth. That should be the way forward. That's what I'm going to try to prove. <clears throat> Oops. I pushed too hard. Now, Kurt Vonnegut said, we could have saved the world, but we were too cheap. Woody Allen was asked to define nature. He said, actually, nature is basically one big restaurant, which is what it is. Walk around the museum, you can find out. Um, but what he did not say is that nature is free lunch. There is no free lunch. There is no free lunch. We pay now, or we pay later. It's just like buying a car. If we pay later, we're going to be paying a whole lot more. If we want to make a difference, we have to pay now. But we seem to be saying we'd rather externalize all the payment uh, to nature, in other words, future generations. In other words, we'd rather let our grandchildren pay. Kids, grandchildren in the world, by the way. Uh, there are people out there, uh, politically powerful people, who uh, uh, don't like government programs, who don't like taxes, and some of them really like guns. I'd recommend they all move to paradise. Paradise actually exists here on Earth. It's called Somalia. They got no government programs, they got no taxes, but they got lots of guns. And I suggest people of that philosophy would like to move us toward barbarism. Actually, the most civilized places in the world are the places with the highest taxes. Uh, I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes who said, taxes are the price we pay for civilization. Uh, believe it or not, Canada cut $100 billion in tax revenue over a five-year period. That's a lot of money. And that, I guess, gave an excuse to cut 100 million in one year from science. Oh, uh, I know you can read this, but I'll read it. Uh, we need a very high carbon tax, or could, let's call it carbon fee, uh, which will uh, partially reduce income taxes and corporate taxes. Then we can increase investment in infrastructure, jobs, and renewable energy. We'll have the cash to do it. But it's quite unlikely that this will happen because we're living in a bubble. We're living in a beautiful bubble. We're in it right now. Uh, I uh, watched this bubble grow from the age of uh, 20 in 1950. I observed uh, the, the general thought was we're going to go roaring in this gas guzzling machine up a yellow brick road with rose guzzler colored glasses and not pay any attention to where we're going. I think it's still going on. I don't think we have to start paying attention to where we're going. Um, oops, I pushed this a little bit too hard. Um, this is the only proper painting of mine in the, in the show. There's a, there's a myth that ostriches, uh, when danger threatens, lower their heads in the, in the sand because they don't want to see the danger. Wrong. Ostriches lower their heads, but they keep their eyes wide open, unlike us. We don't seem to want to pay attention. Uh, we seem to want to amuse ourselves to death. Orwell, George Orwell, feared that the uh, truth would be con uh, concealed from us. Uh, Huxley feared that the truth would be drowned in a sea of irrelevance. Orwell said that people would be uh, uh, controlled, by, controlled by the infliction of pain. Huxley believed that people would be controlled by the infliction of pleasure. Think about it. Now, this is something people do not want to think about. I don't know if any of you have seen it before. Uh, the Killer Equation. In 1930, the year I was born, one unit of energy yielded 100 units of energy. 1971, one unit of energy yielded 30 units of energy. In, 19, in 2010, one unit of energy yielded 17 units of energy. It's going in one direction. Tar sands and fracking, one unit of energy yields three to five units of energy. We're burning precious natural gas to pollute the world. We're desperate and dangerous where we're going now. It's going in one direction. So a smart guy, uh, Jeff Rubin, uh, an economist from the uh, World Markets Group, Bureau Bank of Commerce wrote a couple of books. Why your world is going to get a whole lot smaller. The end of growth. But is that all bad? Think about it. 
the bubble cannot keep on growing. It's, it, if it keeps on growing, it's going to have to burst catastrophically. Uh, when, I was, when I was born, 1930, the world population was 2 billion. Now it's 5. It took from the beginning of, of time until um, about uh, 1930 uh, for the first billion. But uh, and, uh, what I'm saying is the last billion took 13 years. So what we need to do is move from oil dependency to local resilience if we want to go on for a good future. And we need to follow in Schumacher's uh, footsteps with his philosophy, his holy health, who is in favor of that, beauty, and I mean uh, beauty getting joy from nature, getting joy from human relations. Not necessarily a lot of getting joy from shopping. And permanence. So that It is possible to have a smaller world. It's going to happen anyway, either catastrophically or we're going to shrink it gracefully in the ways that I've already talked about, by paying for things and paying attention to things. And we can't have a full planet. The planet is beautiful right now. It can be beautiful at the time of our grandchildren. We only have to do two things. We have to pay attention and we have to pay for it. And I think it's worth it.